Motion is kind of one example of it. So, uh, analog to what you have, right? From in motion. So, from in motion is a measurable map on a product field algebra that satisfies certain properties. So, that measurability over the product sigma algebra is something that makes from in motion a stochastic process. While the rest of the property are the property that makes from in motion the brown motion. Okay. So if I have an abstract map, X, that's a map from a time interval. Um, and, uh, a rare value map um, from field of omega into R, where P stands to be plus infinity, could be typically, it could be a finite time as well, uh, P is to be anything. The finite interval could be uh, an infinite interval. So a map from this, uh, a real valid map, or G plus omega, omega in the same sample space. <coughs> um, you can call it that this map is a stochastic process. Stochastic process. Not only stochastic process, but it's the nearest time stochastic process. If this map X is measurable yeah. with respect to the products of X, Sigma field product with uh, the signal thing that's actually. Okay. Uh, obviously, I'm arguing that I have an underlying probability space where I'm talking about So, any measurable map that it depends on time and omega, and that is measurable with respect to this product in my algebra, is going to be. This is a process of okay. Remember, we know when we are writing the definition of bounding motion that this was the first property that it was defined. This is the property that makes a bounding motion a stochastic process. Okay. So, More location if you have a stochastic process X um, that is say, C E is in this time domain. If you look at this process as a map from T on to X of T omega, 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 omega is fixed. Okay. Then this is called a path So it's a path of this stochastic process. Okay. Uh, for each fixed omega, such a map it is, it is called the path of a stochastic process. It's a path of X. It's one single path of X. And uh, 
and uh, so also talk about the distribution of the stochastic process. Finite dimensional. Dimensional distributions plus X is basically family of probabilities which looks like as such. So the notation that you have the, the probability. And well, subscript, subscript, we yeah. have some instant D1, finite instant D1, D, 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 N. So, what does this mean? So, I'm going to call such probabilities as finite dimensional distribution of the process, but what is the precise description of it? The precise description of it is take this probability measure that you have here. So due to the probability okay, that x at the time t1 at the time t1 is going to be in the set table thanks so this probability has been given a name and so if if this is a process at each instant, you know, it's going to be stay in some subset of R. That's like that where AIs are they all are the subsets of R. AIs are from the time you may all of these AIs basically are the Boran sets of R. Take it. So if I have a process, it's going to take values in R. If it's going to take values in R, then at any instant, it could be in any, you know, kind of subset of R, actually. Okay. And we can, or we should be able to talk about such joint distributions. At every time instant, you know, xt1, xt2, such like it's it's a it's a random variable. If you fix an instant, you know, it's a random variable. What's the probability that this random variable is going to be in some side k1 and some side k2 so forth? Call such probability the it's a family that is why this you know uh, definition is useful, we'll see in a moment that way. Then imagine you want to compute that what are the probability that you know the value of the grounding motion is going to stay over in an interval. Okay. The question is how can I compute that probability? Okay, that would be easy because I know that you know grounding motion follows you know, uh, normal That's distribution. That. No, how to write the book. But then you can then you can talk about that. Okay, what is the probability that the process is going to stay, you know, in a certain interval at some moment, and in the next moment is going to be in another interval. So in other words, you have something joint of how to talk about that, how to compute the probability, at least in case of the Brownian motion. Okay. So I've said definition. Any measurable map, you know, uh, over the products in algebra is uh, uh, classic of one example yesterday saw already the ground motion is a classic process. Also the scale random walk is an example of, of you know, uh, you know, a classic process that would also be a continuous time stochastic process. Random walk is a discrete time stochastic process, but 
स्केल में कम बहुत क्लियर अंदर एक ग्राम बोला consider all those omegas for which the paths of you know x and y agree with each other Defined on the same probability space, I'm going to say y is a modification of x. If for each t x and y agree almost should, okay. agree almost should. So here t is fixed. While you are looking at the equality, you know from the perspective of okay. omega. So if this happens, almost sure you're going to say x and y are a modification. But obviously. You can also look at, you know, their um, equality from the perspective of the t actor. Okay, in other words, for each omega, for each omega, so the first one doesn't rise to the level. Well, the first one, which is also the original one, rises. Yes, you can. You can say. You can say it, and then if you treat treat y as a primary yeah. processor, yes, it's the value of one. Yes. Then if you fix some mega, and you compute the probability of all those mega for which x of t omega and y of t omega are equal, but for all d. And if this happens, you're going to call x and y are indistinguishable. You can't distinguish either. X and y are. What are the key differences between both definitions? They almost say the same thing. Okay. Looks like for one thing here, is that if you fix t, you look at it, and then you see the equality from the perspective of magnets. They are equal, and when you say in distinguishability, you can say that you pick up all those trajectories of the process X and Y for which they agree at all times. Actually, okay. Here you are saying uh, 
So I have a profit factor, process Y, and I'm saying that fix some moment. Okay. Path should be same. Not, not the path should be same, but the value should be same actually. They have a key to moment actually. In other words, the value should be same. But this should happen at every time. But in case of the investigation review, that if you fix two omegas, up to two omega, right? then, and you see the trajectory of x and trajectory of y, then they are basically going to be coincident over each other, each other for the entire time. Right? No need to talk about some examples. For example, I'm taking from in motion. And some data process. Why I feel that it's scale of the Z, where Z is a standard normal random variable. What you can see is that W of T, you know, this both processes W of T. Y of T has the same distribution at all times, are they? Okay. They have same distribution at all times. Because what are the distribution of this? N0. And the distribution of this is N0 T. It's a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance T. And that would be the same distribution for this item. If it's a standard normal, multiplying with that. Numbers of expectation of this is going to be zero. The variance of this is going to be T times one. So the distribution is. But what we can see is that this is not ground in motion, for sure. Both have the same distribution for all times. But this is not ground in motion. This is not ground in motion. What property it is going to miss? Yes, it's the in people. It's really hard to be chosen. But it's from the definition. From the definition. I would like to have a look at you know, independence. Increments. Increment of independence. And they were done. In processes, they will say the distribution, but they are not of the same nature. I can tell you one process has a modification. They agree on each of the that the ability is for sure, but they are two different processes. Another example would be that if you take sample space to be 0 and 1, and you pick it with the, the back measure, And whenever, just to quickly record, whenever I say, before getting into this, whenever I say, you know, something is a back measure, so what are the key things that you're going to keep in? What would be that? So we know that Lebesgue measure has a, you know, we defined it in a very complicated manner actually, that you define outer measure, okay, and you, you know, three months now. And, and then you restricted that outer measure okay, on some kind of mm -hmm. mu star measurable sets. Mm -hmm. And that collection of that mu star measurable sets become a sigma algebra. Okay, and then you define a measure over the so you know. So that's a complicated definition, mm -hmm. we know that. Yeah. The question is what what is the key thing that we should you keep in our head? Uh -huh. So the key the key thing that we should always keep about about the Lebesgue measure is that you can kind of keep it as the map from where to the instrument that I can. Uh, 
key things. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, uh, it has that complicated description, but the key thing is that, that it, it agrees to the Lebesgue model of the interval, any kind of interval length of it. is basically the length of the interval. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you take the union, a countable union of you know, such kind of intervals, it's going to be what you call the sum that has additivity property. Mm -hmm. So let's just say AI, BI, we have a I here, so BI minus AI. So on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Good, yes. So it, it, it just takes a complicated set okay. and just you look at from the perspective that okay, what are those intervals? Basically, we need, if you remember, we, you can also prove that collection of all such you know intervals. You know, is going to be uh, what was the term for it? Was it a semi ring? I think there was a, there was a term for it. You have uh, you take the collection of all such intervals, and from that you generate. Otherwise, you can have a complicated Borel set. So you just have to look at okay, which intervals are going to cover this complicated Borel set actually and the measure of that complicated set is going to be less than or equal to the measure of you know all those intervals which are covering it. Okay? But if you have you know the union of all such intervals by this way. So at least these properties of the back measure should always be head actually. And one of the key property that if your and it's especially about the integrals, that if your function contains the finite number of discontinuity, then the integral with respect to the same as the same as the same as the same as the he thinks we should have some glimpses in our head that when the right to back measure what is the back measure? Okay. Another example would be for example, take omega 0, 1 with the measure m okay. and take a process that is uh, you know, 0 for entire times and entire omega just to journalistic and take a process y that is basically the indicator function. Okay. So it's an indicator function. It's an indicator function. That's a, you can take the y as an indicator function of some set that has measures it. So for the sake of simplicity, let's just take singleton. That's it's an indicator function of a singleton instant t actually. So y of t is the indicator function of single that so y of omega indicator function p operated on to omega. Okay? What interesting thing you can say about this? There are two different processes. This is not, this is entirely zero and this is not entirely zero. But, I mean, if you see, they agree with each other, mm -hmm. almost at all omegas actually. Yes. Okay. Uh, almost all omegas. So, so you have this modification equality for all the time. 
So where where they don't agree, which is uh, say this instant, so this set singleton has a magnetic field actually. So you can say that they are equal times thicker. This little exercise, you know, go through that exercise as well. So, with this definition, this definition, I can proceed to, you know, some new properties of the coronal motion. So, here's a proposition. Okay. That tells you that you know, Brownian motion is a beast subject. Yeah. If it's rough, after you know, we're, we're talking about something massive. Okay. So for each type T, okay. almost all parts. Yes. So yesterday we also proved you know, that you know running motion is nowhere differential. Yes. Now you have a similar kind of a state. What are the key distinctions between both? Right. Instead, you get me just the two things. So you said that it's going to be, you know, you take a particular trajectory, okay, and look at it the entire time actually. It's, it's not going to be differential. Now it says that you fix an instant and look at it the all of the trajectories. At that instant, none of these trajectories are going to be differential. You have to keep in mind when you are talking about T. So when when you want to do the calculus with, so for example, a stochastic process, you can deal with you can do it when you are dealing with the time D actually, because with respect to omega, you can't. It doesn't make sense checking differentiability, you know, relevant to omega because so you can. So when you are looking at the process from time perspective, so you are looking at something dynamical actually, okay, so evolving say, dynamical, and you can talk about the calculus, of continuity, differentiability, this and that. Mm -hmm. But when you are looking at from omega perspective, you know, fix t and see it from omega perspective, then it's points. So it will be points, but you can't talk about. So you can talk about the, their measure theoretic probability, measure theoretic pro properties. But it would not really make sense that, okay, you know, you know, I, you know, that I want to differentiate with respect to Omega. It doesn't make sense. We haven't defined it. We haven't defined it. So we have to look at that. So what does this is? It says that if you fix the instant T and see the different trajectories of the Brownian motion, each of the trajectories is not going to be differential at that instant. It's going to be rough. Well, yesterday that was saying that okay, you you fix a trajectory, okay, yes. then it is, and look at this process for the entire time is going to be rough at all times. Though you can prove a, even a stronger result, and the stronger result is that all trajectories, what at the moment you are saying, all trajectories at T are not differential. Right? But what you can prove is that all trajectories at all times are you know not differential. They are nowhere differential. Okay, that would be a stronger result than obviously. Than this, but at least you should know. But 
you know, it, it's not so sp something special about the instant B, you can choose this T to be anything. Okay. So no matter what trajectory of drawing motion you take, and no matter what instant you take, it's always rough. You can't differentiate it. Fixed T 